as adults, we don't often feel the spiritual mystery. The busyness of life takes over and makes us blind to the wonder of God. If it's missing, even just a little bit, you need to spiritually uplift yourself. And the way you do this is by using the eyes of God instead of looking through the tired, old, human eyes. You look from within spiritually, and then from within, when you again perceive the hope and the wonder, all the rest that you see becomes absolute wonder and magic. We can have areas of our thinking that are a bit dark. They've darkened over time. And perhaps we've become a bit numb because of some of the stresses of life. But when we get back into the Spirit of God and allow the wonder of the Christ to work again inside of us, it becomes wonderful and it becomes powerful. As a child, we anticipated with great hope because we knew that everything was going to be taken care of. As an adult, we need to know that too. We need to know that we have that same parent watching over us. The same care, the same keeping. The problem is, is we're often fighting a cynical adult mind. We know the pressures of life very, very well. We know the financial pressures of trying to meet the ends today of all of our obligations on a daily basis. And we also know how short our days are. Life seems to move quicker and quicker every year. But when we allow the majesty of hope to take place in us, something very, very special can occur. Do you remember the play Annie? In the play Annie, she sang in the middle of the depression, the sun will come out tomorrow. Well, that play took place in the Great Depression, and some this very day are consumed by a depression of economic times. Some this very day are consumed by their own depressions of their own pressures, and challenges in their life. They want life to be right again. They want to find that ingredient that is missing somehow, the spiritual recipe to make everything good again. But they don't know how. It seems like over the years they have lost their ability. In Ephesians 3, 11 and 12, the Bible states this, Jesus Christ our Lord, in whom we have boldness and Listen to this, it's coming. And confidence of access through faith. Those are three of my favorite words in the Bible. That you have confidence of access to God. Let's suppose you work for a company and you're on a special project, you have to step out, you have to take risks, but you don't mind being out there on a limb because you have confidence of access to the president of the corporation. You know that no matter how much you have to step out, you can go to the president and say, hey, is this all right? Am I taking the right action? Am I doing the right thing? Now think about this 
in your life today, this moment. This is why we are all here. We're here to think and rethink and rethink spiritually and make God real in our life, in our mind. Today, as you build the presence of God in your awareness, you put one block on this brand new house of consciousness inside of you. You're building a real, lasting, lifelong faith. A knowledge of real, God-ordained help because you have confidence of access. Nothing in your life is going to drag you down so much that you can't have hope. Why? Because you are aware directly that you have a direct access to God. Now, there is real power. If we know it, any moment of the day, no matter how tough, no matter how overwhelming it is to the human, that we have a greater power than ourselves available to us, that we can directly call upon and allow this power of God to work through us. The Apostle Paul went to the churches. The reason that he did this is the churches at the time were feeling great fear. Well, it's no different today. Churches are people, and people do feel fear. It's a natural feeling because there are a lot of things that happen in life that we need to overcome. But in these letters, Paul continually told them to hope in Christ to step out on faith. And he said this is the type of hope that transcends mere wishful thinking. It is a hope that springs eternal, just like our faith in God. Imagine if you have this at the foundation of your very being, at the foundation of your life, to really celebrate this day that God has given us. Well, we have to be reborn. We have to experience in a brand new way. We have to be reborn and know that God is with us in this moment. We are not just repeating yesterday. With God's help, we have a brand new day with a brand new person, a brand new mind to experience because everything is new and fresh. We have to know that we have a hope that springs eternal inside of us. Romans 6, 4 states, We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Now, my friends, that does not mean that we are to die a physical death. Many feel dead walking around their daily lives. And they need new life again. They need something that is stirring, moving inside of them again. Well, it says correctly in Colossians 1, verse 27. It says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So, the foundation of your life that gives you the ultimate gift is Christ awareness. And your access to that, you know this very moment today, even in the middle of your problem, no matter what you're facing, nothing is impossible to you because nothing is impossible to God. It is the message of God working 
inside of each of our lives, no matter what. Are you wondering what to do in some situation? Affirm this, God knows the way, God shows the way. You open your mind to divine guidance. You know that you'll be shown by God what to do. You know that you'll have a faith and a, a courage to act in a decisive way. Are you confused? Are you troubled by the way that your life, or perhaps even more troubled by a dear one, a family member, the way they seem to be following an unwise path, and you're sure that it is going to lead them to unhappiness, affirm, God knows the way, God shows the way. You personally may not be able to do anything to alter another person's course of action, to save them from their unhappiness or their grief. But you remember that it is God in them that is their guide. You trust in God in them to bring them through every experience and to be their own light, to be a protecting and loving presence that is ever with them. They have confidence of access. God knows the way. God shows the way. You rest in this realization, and you have no fear, and you have no anxiety. With God, there is always a way. In Isaiah 42, verse 16, the Bible states this, I will turn darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. No matter what your religion, as we go to God, as we hope, and as we bring forth that power inside of us and through us, we know that spiritually nothing is impossible to us. We have confidence of access. We say at this point, that we allow our hearts to be lifted up into a great new awareness, a new expectancy, a new wonder and mystery. And we can testify through our lives that it does work. I can testify that we have a choice. This is the best time to have a choice. Discover the power of making a spiritual inventory, to make a list of all the good in our lives. The most popular project that Positive Christianity does on a yearly basis is the Gratitude to God calendar system. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this today with a personal story that goes back even before I met my friend Al Sears that we talked about earlier. There was a time that I was one of the most negative people that you would ever want to meet. I know you might doubt that, but it's true. Almost every word that came out of my mouth was self-degrading and negative. I started to read positive books like Norman Vincent Peale and Og Mondino, but I was still a million miles away from where I needed to be. I came up with a little self-invention to help Chris. I took a calendar, and every day that I was able to live that day through the waking hours of that day, positive, faith-filled, aware of God, I put an up arrow. Every day that I had fallen back, 
and became negative again. And sometimes I wasn't even aware at the beginning that I was doing it. And then a whole day passed and I said, "Uh uh-oh, I put a down arrow. Every week I would examine my progress. Every month I would look at my progress. I would celebrate the times that I had more up arrows. And I would celebrate eventually that I had an entire month of up arrows. And then an entire quarter. And then an entire year. When I did not think negative. When I did not get sucked down by the gravitational pull of negative thinking. And I was able to create a new life. Well, that is what I'm encouraging you to do today. Get a calendar and begin to keep track of where you are. Reward yourself for those days when you're aware of God. Reward those days for those days you're able to take the reins of your own mind and And hold yourself into that area where you are totally living in God and allowing those good things to be built as you hold them in your mind. You stop to realize that life is this thoughts times 365 days. A positive, happy person or a negative person. You realize that you and God have the power to change your day. And when you change your day, you realize that with God working in and through you, you do have the power. Because at the basis of your life, you have confidence of access. When we read books about people, especially famous people, do we realize that these are just ordinary people who have in some way gone beyond the norm? They have gone beyond the ordinary and they've gone beyond the ordinary where? First, in their thoughts, in deciding that they can take reins of their life in thinking and change it. So, with a simple calendar, I invite you to do the same. Now, you cannot have access to something unless you become like it. Let me repeat that. You can't have access to something with full power and full majesty until you become like it. In 1 John 2, verse 6, it says, Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. As you have this belief, even in a small way, growing inside of you. You are providing an opportunity for the floodgates of God to be opened in your life, the wonder of God to work through you. And when that happens, you can put that whole period of time as an up period of time. You are already your own story, and so am I. We're all writing our biographies right now. Every day is a mini lifetime. Are we happy today? Do we feel the hope of God today? If your story could be told in this 24-hour period of time, what would you want people to say of you? Well, you would want people to say the best. You would want people to say how loving, how faith-filled you were, and how positive. If you go into a situation in your life that's negative, you want to be the one to spread hope, not false hope, but a hope that you really 
believe in. Not wishful thinking, but God's truth. You know that it is real because you know you have confidence of this. And having access to God, you have incredible power to bring forth and through your life what you wish to bring forth. The way that you convert others to a higher way of life than they are presently living is for them to see something in you and want it in themselves. Let me share with you Job 11 verse 18. And you will have confidence, because there is hope. You will be protected, and you will take rest in safety. I like that. Rest in safety. When we realize our access to God, we feel safe. We feel safe no matter what is happening around us in our company, in the world, in our family in our own bodies. When we realize that we have that direct connection and we're plugged in, if we know that God is everywhere present and all good and the only power in the universe, what do we need to be protected from? Well, if we're honest, what we need to be protected from is ourselves. We need to constantly remind ourselves and our small human mind that we're not alone. The minute we think we're alone, we cut off a great access inside of us in our awareness. And we begin to shake and tremble in our soul. And we feel as if we're powerless. God is not far off, though. God is right where you are, right this moment. No matter what you're facing, you don't face it alone. We're not isolated islands. We're all connected with a force and a power and a, an absolute energy that will come through every phase of our being. The Bible urges, have this mind in you that was also in Christ Jesus. One of the greatest gifts that God has given us and is giving you now is abiding hope. It is the idea that there are not one mind in you, but two. There is a human mind in you, but there is also a Christ mind. And this Christ mind has great power. It has built-in powers that come with it as standard equipment from the Creator. And the minute we become silent, as we do our prayers, we have this other mind enter in. It's no longer blocked. We relax in the safety and it comes in. We relax in the awareness and it comes in. And there is something that is higher that is working in us. See, my friends, life can be tough unless we connect the Christ mind inside of you is always relaxed. It's never nervous. It is not overstressed at any time. It can handle whatever we need to handle. And when we connect, we have full access, charged up power. There is a divine plan for your life. And the Christ mind knows that plan. And let's talk about the plan in these final moments. God is always gentle. God never criticizes you. God is always loving. You might feel 
in prayer as if your human mind is being hugged. You might feel a giant, wonderful, soft voice say, I love you, and I care for you. Stop struggling so much. Stop hating yourself. Stop criticizing and being cynical of everything in your life. And God says, look with my eyes. Perceive with my love. Give yourself a break and let me take over and work in you for a while. When we do, it becomes wonderful. We go forward with a great recharge and a power that we didn't think was in us. But it is. Psalms 39, 7 says, And now, Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in Thee. Everyone here, everyone watching on television, has this equally. Because it is part of God's basic gift to you. You're not far away from it. You have it right now. The Bible says something that is somewhat mysterious. It says, hope is the anchor of the soul. Well, we do have an anchor inside of us, just like a boat. You know, on a daily basis, wherever we put our anchor down, that's pretty much where we stay. We can put our anchor down in gloom, misery, and despair. Or we can put our anchor down in great power and great relief in God. When you have hope in your human mind, it feeds and opens up channels of belief and gives you spiritual nourishment. We have to ask the question whether or not we're feeding ourselves. How do we feed ourselves? Sim very simple. By rising in mind to the high plane of thoughts. By hoping. This feeds our soul. We have that opening inside of us that allows the floodgates to open and allows all the majesty of God to come forth. And when it comes forth, it comes forth with great power. It is my personal prayer for you today that you have this that it develops in you, that it grows, that you have nothing in your life that follows but up arrow days. That you can put on your calendar the statement, God and I did it. And you're more aware than you ever were of the presence of God in your own individual life.